Good morning. Thank you all for joining us. It is a little after 8.30 and you're at the Finance and Fiscal Resources Committee. Our first item on the agenda is public comment. Is there anyone who would like to speak today? Please state your name and your address and you have three minutes. Hello. Good morning. How you doing everybody? My name is Dee Jones. Uh, first of all, I'm just thankful to be alive, thankful f to be able to give back. Uh, I got some cool things that I'm able to do. I'm really excited. I went through a, a whole process of uh, being able to um, develop an eSports league for the kids that are on uh, King County Juvenile Probation and Surveillance. And now I have the official green light to actually do this uh, eSports league for the kids that are on uh, probation and surveillance. And we'll be doing this at the Juvenile Services Building. And I'm really excited to do this just because I used to be a kid in the juvenile detention, and I just remember the first time I actually went to the juvenile detention for bringing a gun to school, and a bunch of times I've been to the juvenile. But it just, it just crazy to just really just be able to develop an um, eSports program or just to even just give back and work with uh, the kids around the community and hearing that uh, even, if the, even if the juvenile detention uh, was at um, 150 beds that it was still wouldn't be at capacity for the, the amount of youth that are um, out there um, that will probably be in the juvenile detention. And so I'm really excited about this just to be able to educate the youth on finances, life insurance, voting, civics, um, slow voting turnout. It's a lot of um, people not engaged in politics, local politics, and local politics is just as important as a presidential election, which is coming up in 2024. And uh, it's gonna be a crazy 2024. I just, um, just gonna do everything I can to educate the community, be sure to let them know about the political candidates at every level and let them know what I feel like and what they feel like. Um, I, don't, I can't say which is the best pilot, which is the best political candidate, but I'm just going to educate people to the best of my knowledge. Um, it's because it's very important to have these people educated on politics and civics. I really um, just really just appreciate just being alive and being able to do this. And I just like knowing that the school to prison pipeline exists, knowing that um, the criminal justice system is corrupt, knowing that it's a lot of people that don't care about our youth, um, at all ethnicities, a lot of people profit off of people um, and being in prisons and being in the criminal justice system. And so I'm gonna do everything in my power as a black person, as, as a person of color and somebody that just cares about human beings and people not suffering and trying to reduce crime and violence and being able to do something positive and being able to use video games and being able to show people that there's careers, jobs and opportunities that can be developed. And I'm gonna continuously do this. And I just really appreciate being alive and being able to do this. Thank you. Anyone else who would like to speak during public comment this morning? Good morning. Good morning. I, I assume this is the only opportunity for public comment. Am I correct in that? Thank you. My name is Dane Gates. I am a resident of the Third Ward. We are living in a pivotal time in our nation when financial decisions made are actually issues of life and death. Medical debt is the number one cause of bankruptcy in our nation. Being part of an aging population, I myself face challenges of medical debt. Relief would be helpful to many Kent County residents. Many facing addictions would also benefit from sound decision making. It is also important to invest in our youth who deserve good learning opportunities in preparation, in preparation as future leaders of this country. I strive daily for one goal, to leave the world better than I found it. And I ask you to join me. Do not miss your opportunity. Thank you. Good morning. My name's Michelle Triskowski, and I'm part of Grand Rapids for Affordable Housing. 
And I just want to say that you all have a responsibility here and you were elected to help the people. And so anything you can do, anything that you can do to help people of this county and the world really, to make things better for them because you have this obligation, all of you do, and I hope that you take advantage of that. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak this morning? All right, seeing none, our next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. Could I get a motion to approve the consent agenda? Moved by Commissioner Kalman, support by Commissioner Sparks. Any questions or comments regarding the consent agenda? All right, seeing none, all those in favor, please say yes. yes. All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. Item number three on the agenda is from Human Resources, and it's the 2024 Management Pay Plan Compensation Program. Action requested. Recommend to the Board of Commissioners to approve management pay plan, pay range, wage, and benefit changes. Summary. Approximately 316 clerical, professional, and management positions are covered under the management pay plan pay structure. As authorized by the Board of Commissioners, the MPP administrative process provides for periodic review and adjustment of the pay structure for MPP positions. It is requested that the MPP pay structure be increased by 4% effective January 8, 2024, and that all MPP staff receive a 4% pay increase on the same date. Proposed changes to the MPP benefits include the maximum retiree health care stipend for employees who retire on or after January 1 of 2024 will increase to 450 per month, postpone effective date of separate retiree health care rating pool to January 1, 2025, add 80 hours of paid parental leave, add new high deductible health plan with 15% employee premium contribution and associated employer wellness incentive program. Add $100 copay for specialty medications and lower out-of-pocket maximum for prescriptions for employees enrolled in the HMO and PPO plans. Increase maximum supplemental health life insurance coverage, supplemental life insurance coverage from $150,000 to $450,000. Increase tuition reimbursement from $315 to $365 per credit hour. The total cost of $1,373,252 to implement the proposed salary increases is included in the 2024 budget. This item was reviewed and approved by LA Legislative and Human Resources Committee at its November 28, 2023 meeting. Thanks, Al. Is there a motion for this item? Motion. Moved by Commissioner Sparks. Is there support? Second. Support by Commissioner McLeod. Yeah. Um, questions or comments regarding this? Yes, Commissioner Sparks. Thank you, Chair. I'm excited that we're thinking about the future of our you know, people that work with Kent County and that will retire from Kent County and to see that we have taken the time to make sure that we think beyond, you know, just money, so health insurance and whatnot. So I'm just going to say kudos to our um, board who put this together, the management pay, pay plan. Thank you. That's really important. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? Commissioner McLeod. Thank you, Chair. Um, so I would echo those um, sentiments. I would also um, say that I, I was um, very happy to see um, not only in this, um, this uh, um, action request, but also the subsequent ones that we'll be um, talking about shortly, that we are um, offering now um, paid parental leave, which I, I think is just um, a, a sentiment that we um, have talked about for some time. Um, and I'm, I'm really happy to see it materialize here. Um, 80 hours is really wonderful. I'd love to see that higher, but it's, we got to start somewhere. So this is a great start. And I just wanted to say that I really do appreciate that being um, 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 prioritized in all of these agreements and that um, all, all of the other things are great as well. But we know that um, parental leave is something that um, supports families and supports both parents um, to be able to support their families. And so I, I'm just happy that this is in there. So thank you. Thank you, Chair. Just on that note, I just wanted to confirm the paid parental leave is for any new parent, whether that parent was the uh, parent who gave birth to the child or is the spouse or partner of, a, uh, of the other. Correct. Wonderful. Thank you. Right. Any other questions or comments regarding this item? Right. Seeing none, all those in favor, please say yes. Yes. All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. Next item is also from Human Resources. It's amendments to the collective bargaining agreements for Parks, Assistant Prosecuting Attorneys, and Attorney Referees. 
Action requested. Recommend to the Board of Commissioners to approve amended collective bargaining agreements for assistant prosecuting attorneys, attorney referees, and park managers. Summary. In 2022, five-year collective bargaining agreements were negotiated with unions that represent the county's assistant prosecuting attorneys, attorney referees, and park managers. The agreements include across-the-board wage increases of 3% for 2024 and 2% 2 for 2025. The maximum retiree health care stipend for employees covered under these agreements is $400. Six additional unions representing Kent County staff have agreements that expire in 2023. All six unions have been offered across the board wage increases of 4% in 2024 and 3% in 2025 and a maximum retiree health care stipend of $450. Several enhancements to employee benefits have also been offered to all six unions and are recommended for management pay plan staff. The following amendments are recommended for assistant prosecuting attorneys, attorney referees, and park managers to maintain internal equity between all Kent County employee groups. First, increase across the board wage adjustments for assistant prosecuting attorneys, attorney referees, and park managers who are in Teamsters Local 214 to 4% in 2024 and 3% in 2025. Second, increase the maximum retiree health care stipend to $450 for retirements on or after January 1, 2024. Third, add paid parental leave, reduce the out-of-pocket maximum for prescriptions and increase the maximum life insurance allowable for employee purchase from $150,000 to $450,000. The cost of the additional salary increases for 2024 through 2026 is $367,515. This item was reviewed and approved by the Legislative and Human Resources Committee at its November 28, 2023 meeting. Thanks, Al. Is there a motion for this item? So moved. moved by Commissioner Hildebrand. Is there support? Board. Commissioner Coleman. Um, questions or comments regarding this item? Yes, Commissioner Coleman. Thank you, Chair. I was just curious. I noted in the prior one the option of the HSA high deductible health plan combo being added, but that one's not here. Is that just something we can't do under the union contracts? Yeah, uh, I appreciate your orientation to detail. Uh, that's a good catch. We, we did uh, negotiate that into the agreements last year. Any other questions or comments? All right, seeing none, all those in favor, please say yes. Yes. All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. Next item from Human Resources is a labor agreement for Teamsters Local 214 Public Health Nurses. Action requested. Recommend to the Board of Commissioners to approve a five-year labor agreement for the period of January 1, 2024 through December 31, 2028 between the County of Kent and Teamsters Local 214 and to authorize the board chair or designee to sign the agreement. Summary. Approval is requested for a five-year labor agreement with Teamsters Local 214, which represents 59 public health nurses. Changes are summarized below. Wages will increase as follows. A 4% across-the-board increase and a 4% market adjustment in 2024, a 3% across-the-board increase plus a 2% market adjustment in 2025, a 2% across the board increase in 2026, and a wage reopener will apply for 2027 and 2028. A high deductible health plan will be added with 15% <coughs> employee premium contribution and associated employer wellness incentive program. Add $100 copay for specialty medications and lower prescriptions out of pocket maximum. The maximum retiree health care stipend will increase from 400 to 450 per month. The effective date of a separate retiree health care rating pool will be postponed to January 1, 2025. 80 hours of paid parental leave will be added. Vacation, PTO, other time off banks, and disability benefits will be adjusted to enhance employee security, flexibility, and work-life balance. Maximum supplemental life insurance coverage will increase from $150,000 to $450,000. The increase to salaries over the first three years of the agreement is $1,817,033. This item was reviewed and approved by the Legislative and Human Resources Committee at its November 28, 2023 meeting. All right, is there a motion for this item? Moved by Commissioner Oliver King. Is there support? Support. Support by Commissioner Wooden. Any questions or comments? All right, 
Seeing none, all those in favor, please say yes. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. Um, I just wanted to thank staff and human resources for all the work that they've done negotiating these contracts. I know it takes a lot of time and effort and back and forth, but um, thank you for your willingness to work together and um, keep Kent County moving forward and being a great place to, to work. So I appreciate it. All right, our next item on the agenda comes from the administrator's office, and it's the Lead Hazard Reduction Capacity Building Grant from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Action requested. Recommend to the Board of Commissioners to accept and appropriate $2,493,629 in grant funds from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, or HUD, Lead Hazard Reduction Capacity Building Grant, and appropriate $249,362.90 from the ARPA-funded lead remediation project to the 2024 Community Development Federal Project Fund budget and authorize the board chair or designee to execute the grant agreement, approve extensions, amendments, and increases to the grant appropriation not to exceed 15% of the original award. Summary, Kent County will receive $2,493,629 from HUD for the Lead Hazard Reduction Capacity Building Grant to develop the necessary infrastructure to operate a lead hazard control program. The HUD grant will supplement the 3.8 million ARPA funded lead remediation project to extend the scope and impact of the county investment. The Kent County Health Department and Kent County Community Action Agency will partner to implement the program. The Health Department will focus on community outreach, risk assessments, and referral to services KCCA will focus on contractor readiness, lead remediation, and inspections. The grant requires a $249,362.90 match, which will be funded through the existing ARPA-funded lead remediation project. The grant period is December 15, 2023 to December 15, 2026. The Legislative and Human Resources Committee approved the addition of four new full-time positions at its meeting on November 28, 2023, to support the work associated with this grant, Corporate Council will review and approve all agreements, extensions, contracts, and amendments as to form. All right, thanks, Al. Is there a motion for this item? Moved by Commissioner Oliver King, support by Commissioner McLeod. Um, questions or comments? All right, seeing none, all those in favor, please say yes. Yes. All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. That brings us to our um, next item on the agenda from the administrator's office. It's the ARPA funding approval for the Fallsburg Dam, a Fuller Campus Clinic, Jail Electrical Controls, and the Medical Examiner Facility Projects. Action requested. Recommend to the Board of Commissioners to approve the allocation of $9,319,075 from the Federal Coronavirus American Rescue Plan Act, or ARPA, to fund the Fallsburg Dam renovation, the Fuller Campus Clinic supplemental funding, the medical examiner facility supplemental funding and the jail electrical control projects and to authorize the administrator controller or designee to reallocate resources between these projects. Summary, Kent County received $127.6 million from the U.S. Department of Treasury pursuant to H.R. 1319 American Rescue Plan of 2021 Section 603 Coronavirus State and Local Fiscal Recovery Fund. The County Board of Commissioners appropriated $10 million via Resolution 1014-2198 to address emergent issues and $737,000 via Resolution 421-2248 to cover Kent County Sheriff overtime expenses related to COVID-19 medical leave. The remaining $116.9 million was appropriated to the Coronavirus Relief Fund via Resolution 1215-22-125. There is currently $9,319,075 of appropriated ARPA funding available for allocation. These allocations may not fully cover the financial needs for project implementation, but they are essential for the project's continuity or obtaining necessary information to make well-informed decisions. This request is to allocate $4.0 million to the Fallsburg Dam renovation project an additional $0.8 million to Fuller Campus Clinic Project, $1.85 million to the Jail Electrical Control Project, an additional $2,669,075 to the Medical Examiner Facility Construction Project. Previously, $3.1 million was allocated to the Fuller Campus Clinic Project via Resolution 01222213 
and six million was allocated to the medical examiner facility via resolution 12.0 12.0122121. Engineering studies for these projects are currently in process. Resources will be reallocated between these projects based on the outcome of the engineering studies. All right. Thanks, Al. Is there a motion for this item? So moved. Moved by Commissioner Coleman. Is there support? Support. Support. Was that? Um, yes. Commissioner Merchant. Um, any questions or comments regarding this item? Commissioner Sparks. Thank you, <clears throat> excuse me, Chair. Um, I would be remiss if I did not mention that I don't love this. Um, I feel like our last monies that we had, um, I do understand the, the use of them, but I felt like this money could have been put into the community. That's what I would have preferred, but I only have one vote. so. Just want to put it on the record. I think we could have used it for the community. Thank you. Commissioner McLeod. Thank you, Chair. Um, so I, I would uh, agree um, with Commissioner Sparks, but um, I want to specifically speak to um, the recommendation um, that were included, that the recommendations that were included. Um, so one recommend, all of the recommendations um, for the Fallsburg Dam, the medical examiner, the health department um, uh, renovations were in the original um, funding proposals that we approved um, with community, you know, with transparency to the community, with you know them understanding that these were the things that we were going to support. Um, and the language used when the board approved the public, public projects was that funds were going to be held back to support project overages for funded projects. So all of the projects except the jail electrical were included in the funded projects. Um, this is a new project um, that was not part of that agreement that we made with the public. And although I do believe the funds um, are needed to support this project, it, the, the fact that it's in here goes against what we the, the agreement that we made with the public that we would use those those funds that were held back specifically to support any overages of the funded projects. And as as I understand, the project, the jail project, was included in the CIP process last year, but wasn't recommended by staff for funding. Um, and the the part of the process, the part of the, the other part of the projects that were supported um, were for, for from were funded from strategic capital. Um, in July of 22. So I just have a couple questions. So it would be helpful to have a full understanding of why the project wasn't recommended for CIP um, support this, this last cycle. Um, I understand that it's a large amount and it would have used a lot of, ca of, the, of the funding available and I understand that, but if it was truly something that needed to be done and, and had a time you know, restriction limitation, I feel like it should have been um, prioritized. And then my second question is, can this project be funded in the next CIP process? Can it be something that's prioritized in that process so that we can ensure that, um, that this is done? Again, I'm not against the proposal that the recommendation at all. I just don't feel like this is the proper venue to support this specific um, recommendation. And I would like to ensure that we stick to what we said we were going to do to the public, which was you know, use this this hold back for this purposes. I wasn't a, a fan of it, the hold back to begin with, but if we were gonna use it to support those overages, I said, okay, let's go on ahead and move forward. So again, I just would like some clarification on that so that I can make sure I have a full understanding of why this is here as a new project. Sure, yes. Okay, so just a, very, a brief history of this item would be that initially there was a CIP approved for four million and change uh, for the jail doors. Uh, basically those costs escalated to over six million and that project was funded and then in January uh, project was submitted for the jail controls I mean the the electrical the jail software updates that control the doors and other things uh, that was one million eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars that would have really sucked the life out of the CIP for the year and we had a number of other things I think people forget a lot of times that most of the CIP is unglamorous roofs and chillers and boilers and things that have to be completed to maintain or replaced to maintain quality facilities. So the CIP committee did not recommend taking this project out of that allocation because of how much it would have burned up out of that. 
the recommendation was that it come out of other sources. Now, I'm going to say that this is hard to find, but if you look at that memo that went to the board from the CIP committee, the one that I sent to you before the meeting we had on CIP, you would see that ARPA is listed as part of other sources. Now, that is really tangential. I'll just lay that out there. I get that. Uh, but it wasn't, and it was not one of the proposed ARPA projects, but it is a need that we have, a significant need that we have, and I think we at least anticipated that there were some things in the CIP that we couldn't fund with the CIP allocation that we had, and that ARPA was mentioned as a possible source to do that. So it, it's tangential, I'll, I'll agree with that. It wasn't communicated as upfront as it should have been in retrospect, I'll, I'll say that too. Uh, but I do think it's at least legitimate. Great. Any other questions or comments? Commissioner Wooden. Thank you, Chair. And just in uh, kind of to build on that, you know, the uh, what would be the consequences of a delay of this project to next year's CIP um, in terms of the urgency of the of the timing? Uh, that the, the uh, you know as I um, my, my assumption is if the doors have been replaced they need the new software for the doors I, to properly I would like to defer to the sheriff for that one so good morning uh, so specifically the door the doors are almost completed they'll be completed probably by the mid January of next year and the wiring for the new controls was included as part of the door project. So none of that will have to be undone to install the new. But the risk with these door controls is over the course of the last several years, that company has gone out of business. They are no longer creating the replacement components that support the touch panel. Um, we've had a couple uh, instances where those touch panels have shorted out and they have to be refabricated by our staff from other parts and pieces that we have on hand. We've tried to re purchase all the replacement components that we can to have in stock, uh, but, it, but it creates a situation where we can't get the doors open and there are people inside. So yes, we can do it when, when we get the funding to do it, but I would classify it as an extrigent circumstance. It needs to be done as soon as we can. Thank you. Um, just on that comment, I, you know, like others, I, I do regret that this is the decision we have to make. I, I think um, uh, when it comes to this inclusion or the dam, uh, I certainly would have preferred uh, these dollars go towards uh, funding some of the other uh, initiatives that we've funded, uh, covering the gaps that we are covering, and you know, seeing ways to maximize its impact. But um, you know. Staff made numerous attempts to secure other state and federal appropriations for the dam. The dam continues to um, uh, have deferred maintenance. It needs to be uh, maintained to uh, secure that area and ensure it's well uh, managed. Uh, we need to have, um, you know, per the sheriff's comments, the uh, this investment is, you know, in my view, necessary from a timing perspective um, and. It's for that that I, I, I'll be supporting this. I, I certainly don't like the fact that this is what we have to do, but I do feel it's necessary. So, thank you. Great. Any other questions or comments? Commissioner Coleman. Thank you, Chair. I, uh, I just wanna take, take a second and, and verbalize kind of my perspective, you know, kind of getting up to the 30,000 foot level on the, on the ARPA uh, allocations. Um, just thinking back to last year at this time and being in the throes of that process, uh, you know, I'm glad to put most of that process out of my mind, <laughs> except for the clickers. I liked the clickers. That was pretty fun. Um, but it was it was an extremely like in depth, you know, thorough process over a year basically. And while while this particular uh, appropriation we're looking at here you know, specifically to kind of more boring, you know, internal projects. Um, I, I just want to kind of reemphasize that all the different, you know, governmental units got ARPA dollars. Um, and so I think Kent County 
as compared to, I'll just pick on the city of Grand Rapids for a second. The city of Grand Rapids got about four times as much per person in ARPA dollars as Kent County did. Um, and they put about, I think it was 4%, maybe 5% into community projects uh, where Kent County through our process put, I think it was nearly 90% into community projects. Um, and so I, I just wanna keep that in perspective that in terms of uh, the process that Kent County went through and the amount allocated to stuff that's not Kent County specific projects in comparison to I think any other governmental unit, uh, I think we did an extraordinary uh, job with that um, and I, I don't want you know this all allocation to look like you know it's all being used for you know just internal county stuff because that is the furthest thing from the truth. So I, I just wanted to get that uh, kind of stated you know for those who may not have been as familiar with the process from last year. Yeah, thank you for pointing that out. There were definitely some governmental units that um, did not have the same public interaction and um, you know vetting that we did here in Kent County. There were some that used the money. You know, they kept it you know 100% internally. So I think you know we did the right thing in getting our members of the community involved. But these are you know projects too that are necessary and necessary to get them across the finish line. So, any other questions or comments, Commissioner McLeod? Thank you, Chair, for another opportunity. Um, so uh, I, I agree with all that. I know that Kent County did something different than most other governmental units, and I think that we should um, applaud the, that opportunity that we we made available for the public. Um, but again, the, the, I think my concern still lies with what we told the public we were going to do with this these remaining dollars. Um, and again, I support all of the recommendations that are in this. Um, this um, recommendation from staff but again if this is if we've got a new project in here that was not part of what we spent all of that time <laughs> this time last year as Commissioner Coleman um, referenced um, that I don't know how we can how we can add something to it so my 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 question that I believe was partially answered was can this be supported by the CIP process? It sounds like it, there's a timing issue that could be a problem there, but I would implore the staff to provide some other options for potentially supporting this. I, I know that there are other ways that we can support this without breaching the public's trust in the fact that we said we were only gonna use this to support overages for the funded projects. Um, so I just wanna make it clear that I do not object to supporting this. I just object to using these funds to support it. So um, I would like to see if there's some other option to be able to support this, um, the electrical work, um, but not from these funds because we did say that we were gonna do something and now we're, we're pretty much saying with this recommendation that we're not gonna do that. Um, so that's where I stand on it, and I'm not going to be able to support it with this new project in there. Um, I would like to support it because I think that the dam and the medical examiner and all of those things need to be supported, but I, I, I don't like that this is in here in this, in this fashion. Any other questions or comments? All right, seeing none, all those in favor, please say yes. 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 All those opposed, please say no. no. Motion passes. Our next item on the agenda is miscellaneous. Is there any commissioner miscellaneous? All right, seeing none, we are adjourned and our next meeting will be on Tuesday, December 19, 2023 at 8.30 a.m.